Air cannons are actually used in industry quite a bit. Uh, for example, at ski resorts, they used to use howitzers to fire explosives into the side of uh, mountain tops or hillsides to dislodge snow and prevent avalanches. And instead, they've started using air cannons to do the same job for simulating bird strikes on uh, the cockpit windows of planes and trains. Also at Disneyland and Disney World, apparently they've replaced the traditional mortars for firing fireworks into the sky with air cannons. I'm gonna make a couple of air cannons. One small and one big. One with parts that you can find at the hardware store and another with parts that I found online. To learn more about the designs or to see the construction, you should make sure to check out the construction and how it works videos. So I finished putting the cannon together and here's what I've got. Two, one. Two, one. <laughs> This device here can figure out the speed of whatever object travels right above it. It has a couple of photo sensors and it senses when the object goes right above the first sensor and then the second sensor. It knows the distance between the sensors so it can figure out the speed of the object. All right, a potato, 140 PSI. Hundred and ninety nine point five. All right, one more the cannonball. Let's give it a shot. Sixty two point nine five feet per second. We found an airfield, uh, which is a, a grassy airfield, and the owners are nice enough to let us use it for the cannon testing. Uh, we're headed out there now and we're gonna see how well these things work. We're at 50 PSI and I'm gonna try putting a potato in and uh, we'll see how far it goes and then we'll up things from there. Three, two, one. <laughs> There's something wrong here. Where'd it go? <laughs> Two, one. Oh, I see it. <laughs> that is so far. <laughs> At 50 PSI. <laughs> there was no, uh, no luck in the search for the missing potato, our little astronaut. Uh, 100 PSI. Let's see how far the potato goes now. So I've got these cannonballs and we wrapped this one in tape, bright yellow tape. Hopefully we can find it. We haven't been able to find a potato yet. That went pretty far. <laughs> Off-road measuring wheel. <laughs> two, one, two. All right. Well, in here I have a um, a helmet cam, um, and we're gonna try to launch that and see if we can recover the video. Uh, we haven't been able to find any of the things we've launched so far, so. It's uh, not looking good, but we're going to try it. Um, and here we go. I'm going to stuff it in the barrel. Two, one. All 
All right, well now we're gonna be a little artistic. I have these paints and we're gonna make a painting. Uh, let's, let's try this out. <laughs> we got a little bit of paint here. Um, a little bit right there. Yar! I have this torpedo and we're gonna fire it at this here fruit. Ha, ah, shiver me timbers. I have to get my land legs. Two, one. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. I might hang this on my wall. All right, well, with our success of finding, recapturing the, uh, the video camera, helmet cam, we're, we're getting a little headstrong, and we think that we can find it again. So we've attached a, a cannonball to the front of the helmet cam assembly to move the center of mass further to the front. It should keep it aligned a little better. Last time it was tumbling all about. So we're going to give it another shot. I have my doubts this time. It might implant into the ground. Last time it bounced and that made it a little easier to find. Um, we'll see. Two, one. All right, well, we found the, uh, oof, the camera. Uh, it was right in the ground right here. The cannonball was real deep. We managed to get the cannonball and the camera out. And uh, look, check out how far it is from where we started there. We started way up there. And um, wow, well, uh, we got it. We'll see if we can uh, recover the video on it and uh, show it to you guys. Okay, let's see if this, see if this works. All right. All right, now we're gonna measure the speed of the big cannon. We've got our same setup here. We're gonna fire it out and measure it up. First off, the potato. So that's about it. We had a great time. I, uh, I hope you had a good time watching it. The potatoes were flying super far. It, we were getting about 600 feet for uh, the, each potato uh, in terms of range. For the cannonball, it went around 800 feet, but it's a little hard to say uh, what it, how it would have done without the tail because I'm sure the tail was slowing it down a lot. Um, an interesting thing I learned in this project was that the optimal angle for firing it for maximum distance would have been lower than 45 degrees, uh, including drag. We were firing them off at 45 degrees. The optimal angle would have been around 30 degrees for what we were shooting. Uh, you should check out the How It Works page for more info on that. Uh, I actually made a little calculator that you can use to, to figure things out. I hope you had a good time. <laughs> Make sure to read the disclaimer on the bottom of the page. And uh, I'll see you next time.